Hi, I'm Michael Jones. I'm one of the pastor teachers at the Orange View Church of Christ in Orange County, California. Uh, we're going through the coronavirus event, and so we've been asked to practice social isolation. So to help with that, I'm broadcasting today from Sesame Street, where there's nobody else around, and that way I'll do my part in helping to slow the spread of the virus. Our congregation puts forward these daily video devotionals each day to help us maintain our walk with the Lord and continue in our spiritual growth and development while we're not able to assemble within the congregation. I want to take us for our time in the Word today to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6. Now this is a passage that is often referred to as the Lord's Prayer, but I prefer to refer to it more as the Model Prayer. Jesus doesn't say, when you pray, pray this. What he says instead is, when you pray, pray like this. But I want to draw our attention to the opening line of that model prayer when he, Jesus identifies God in a particular way. Here's what he says in verse 9 of Matthew 6. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right, let's just kind of stop right there and I want to draw your attention to the way in which God is identified in this model prayer. He's identified as our Father. In this passage, Jesus talks about the intimate and personal nature of our relationship together with God. The initial words of this prayer certainly are important in that they remind us of how it is we are connected to the Lord. We are, in fact, a child of God. Within the scriptures, we're told that we're always going to be a child of some spiritual father. Um, either we are going to be a child of God or we're going to be a child of the devil. In 1 John 3 and verse 10, it says, By this it is evident who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So we're always a child of either God or the devil. And what we want to do, of course, is be a child of God. Now that is truly an incredible thing. When we approach the Word of God, it describes that relationship of God being with us as a caring, loving, attending father to his child. I believe that when I had children myself, my concept of God actually changed. Up to that point, before I had children, I could understand the father-child relationship only from the view of the child. When I became a father, I could understand that relationship from the view of the father. And I knew now how much I loved my children and how much I would always do what was best for them. That's the image that's depicted for us within Scripture. In Hebrews 4.16 it says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of God that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. The ability to go confidently before God is rooted in the reality that God is a caring, loving Father. Now this concept was truly revolutionary in the time of Christ. When we go into the Jewish scriptures of the Old Testament, they did believe in the fatherhood of God, but they saw it in really large terms. God is referred to as Father only 14 times in the entire 39 books of the Jewish scriptures. And even then, it's relatively impersonal. On 14 occurrences of Father, the term is always used to refer to the nation of Israel, not individuals. Now you think about that. In the entire Old Testament, you will not find one individual speaking of God as their father. When we turn to the pages of the New Testament, we find the Lord Jesus refer to his God as Father frequently. And not only that, but he says that we have the ability to refer to God also in that intimate father nature. There's a uh, word that shows up in the New Testament that's a bit foreign to us as English speakers, and that's the term Abba Father. For example, in Galatians 4 and verse 6, he says, Because you are sons, God has spent the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Or in Romans 8 and verse 15, it says, You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Well, that expression, Abba, Father, is an Aramaic phrase 
that refers to an endearing term of one's father. The English equivalent of that might be dad. My son usually refers to me as dad. And when he does, or brings to mind that close intimate relationship between he and myself as father and son. That's the relationship that we have with God. Not only is he our creator, he's referred to as our loving dad in scripture. Well, when God is our father, that gives us some great benefits. It gives us the ability to conquer fear. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says we can cast all of our anxieties on him because he cares for us. The promises of eternal life and salvation are real to us because God is real. He is our Father in heaven and knows what is always best for us and will care for us. That's the promise contained within Matthew 7 and verse 11. If you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask of him? In my relationship with my children, my kids come to me and ask for things all the time. They might come to me and say, Hey, Dad, I really need this. Could you get this for me? You can guess what I usually do. I get it for them. If it's a legitimate need and it's within my ability to do, I'm going to do it. Jesus says, That's true of your Father in heaven. Let me tell you, that'll energize your prayer life quite a bit. When we come to the Lord recognizing God as our Father, it also gives us a tremendous amount of direction and purpose in living. In John 6, verse 38, Jesus said, I have come down to heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Do we look at God and his will and our life the same way? Do we say, I'm not living for my own will, I'm living for my heavenly Father's will? If we are, we're being very Christ-like. And we're certainly bringing joy to our Father who is in heaven. The last thing I'd like to say about this is that by acknowledging God as our Father, one of the things we should recognize is that He is the source of our satisfaction and the one who meets our needs. In Philippians 4.19, Paul says, God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I want you to think about God as your father as you go through your day today, and to think about the loving relationship that you probably have to your kids if you have kids, or that your parents had to you if they were modeling proper parenting, and to recognize that God loves you in a very similar and capable way. As you go through your day today, I want you to think of God as being your loving and caring father. He loves you dearly. He wants to do what is best for you and he has the ability to perform. I think that will greatly energize your prayer life as you pour out your heart to the Lord and watch him work in your life. Well, I hope that information is helpful and useful to you. I'll be back again next time with another passage from the Word of God and from another isolated location.